Hey, what's happening guys? Today we're going to talk a little bit more about oscilloscope basics. In particular, we are going to talk about probes, how to set them up, and how to set your probe compensation so you don't overshoot or undershoot. But first, this Wemos D1, this beautiful creature of a board, that I have promised to give away to somebody today and let me just say I'm trying to give away shit for free here and I only get like five responses kinda sad and there's a train anyway today's winner is upside down George Chambers so George uh, contact me with your name Oh, I know your name, don't I? Your address. Where you want this shipped. As long as it's in the U.S. And this Wemos D1 will be yours. All right, on with the show. So, let's talk about your oscilloscope and the input section. So, now this is a two-channel scope. So, we have channel one and channel two. And inside here, before we get to the analog to digital converter circuitry is a one mega ohm resistor and then we have our probe so our probe is more than just a piece of wire although in theory you could just attach a piece of wire to this BNC connector and for lower frequencies it would work just fine however this probe has 1.2 meters of cable, which is a little over three and a half feet in freedom units. Okay. And that can act as an antenna, and we don't want that. So inside, geez, I'm all tangled up here. Inside our probe head is a resistor and a capacitor. And in this case, it is a 10 ohm or a 9 ohm resistor, 9 mega ohm resistor. And that can be accessed using the old 10 times attenuation thing. Let me see if I can get this to focus here. What? Nope. Try again. What? Nope. One more time. Oh, come on. Why the hell won't you focus? There we go. So most of the time you're going to want to use your probes in the 10X. Now, that does not mean 10 times gain. It actually means divided by 10. So when you put um, your probe in the 10X and you plug it in to the scope with its one mega ohm resistor, and in the 10X you have the nine mega ohm resistor in your probe on, we're gonna have a 10 mega ohm resistance. Now here's the thing, we have to be able to adjust our probe for the scope. And in this case, and in most cases, there is a little adjustment screw. In this case it's up here, in some cases you'll find it in the probe itself. So let's hook our probe up to channel 1. And we'll power up the scope. There we go. Now just about every scope that you're going to come across has a little square wave generator right here. Or it might be over here, but it's going to have a square wave generator. You're going to put your probe tip on the top and the ground on the bottom. So let's hook it up. You always want to hook up your grounds first. And then we'll hook up our probe tip here. Now you can see we have on the screen a waveform. So let's bring it in. Now if you look at the waveform this is supposed to be a square waveform which should have a flat top and a flat bottom but you can see we've got overshoot here see how it's coming up over the top 
it is not zoomed I mean it is not giving us flat it's going too far so with your probe and your scope you should have gotten a little adjustment thingy like this and all you need to do is put it in here and turn it until you end up getting a nice flat top and bottom to your waveform now we are adjusted so that's channel one let's do channel two as well I'm gonna unplug my probe because we don't want any kind of induced capacitance coming off there so we'll plug in channel two and we're going to turn off channel one we don't need to see it channel two is up Well, it would help if I plugged in the Channel 2 probe. That's why they're color-coded, you see. And, you know, I should have really paid attention to these kinds of things. All right, so there's our Channel 2. And you can see we have a little bit of overshoot for Channel 2 as well. What did I do that for? I meant to hit the auto set. There we go. All right, so now we can adjust it. There's our overshoot. Now there's undershoot. See how it doesn't quite make it to level? There we go. That's looking pretty good nice flat tops and bottoms right yep okay so that is how you attach and compensate your probes first step to do when setting up a new oscilloscope and if you're using a shared oscilloscope it's a good idea to do that too because you never know who may have made their own adjustments so that's it i hope you guys enjoyed this if you did give me the big old thumbs up comment share and don't forget to subscribe. I'll see you next time.